First things first, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Fatherhood and the importance of a father in a child's life, it's something that's been unappreciated and overlooked for a while now. So to all the dads that didn't take the easy way out, to all the dads that stuck around to raise their kids, happy Father's Day. And a special happy Father's Day to my own father, David, or as I like to call him, Platt. That's not a nickname, that's his middle name. I was blessed to be raised by the best father that you could ask for. I was not an easy kid to raise, especially during my teenage and college years, but even when I was doing wrong, even when he didn't agree with the decisions that I was making, the circumstances never mattered. I knew if I picked up the phone to call my dad, he was always going to answer. He's always been there for me. All right. Let's get into one of my favorite trash engineers, Natasha Cloud. Been quite a while now since we have talked about Natasha Cloud, or as her friends like to call her, Tasha. Couple of years ago, it seemed like we were talking about Natasha Cloud every week. Now, of course, she wasn't making headlines for her production levels in the dump. She wasn't being talked about for anything related to pretend basketball. Anytime Natasha Cloud was mentioned, the story focused on one thing and one thing only. Mythical racism. Interestingly enough, mythical racism plays a small part in why we're talking about this premier dump diver today. Recently, Natasha Clow was interviewed by the Philadelphia Inquirer. KC, why would a mainstream media outlet waste time and resources interviewing some unknown minimum wage earner? Dude, your guess is as good as mine. The media, they are in the business of drawing traffic to their websites. In order to attract readers, you gotta give them something interesting to read about. Maybe an interview with Charles Barkley? Shay Shay, he's been in the news for weeks after his high profile and traumatically painful divorce from Skippy Bebe. That would be an interesting interview. You could find out why couples counseling didn't work, figure out the reason Shay no longer wanted to take pleasure in Skip's seasoned masculine meat. But both of those guys are retired athletes. The Philadelphia Inquirer, They wanted to interview someone who is still active in the profession, even if the profession is something like magic where Natasha Cloud makes your garbage magically disappear. Tosh Tosh, she does have ties to the city of brotherly love. She was born and raised right outside of Philadelphia. All those major childhood milestones and memories took place in Philadelphia. Learning how to facially shave, learning the definitions of all the letters in LGBT, excelling in basketball at the high school and college level, only to come to the harsh reality that college would be the last time Natasha Cloud would play basketball professionally. She was drafted into the WNBA, I think it was 2015 where she started at the bottom, just like everyone else, freshening up the bathrooms before earning the prestigious position of operations manager. The Philadelphia Inquirer, they did not interview Natasha Cloud to allow their audience to learn more about her personally. They didn't conduct this interview to make her appear more relatable, perhaps convince people in Philadelphia to actually watch the exciting action offered by the WNBA. Natasha Cloud used this interview to explain why the WNBA is a huge embarrassing failure. This interview right here, it is a prime example of why this league is a failure. Dump divers are professionals at playing the role of the victim. These women are excellent at garnering sympathy from woke corporations and the mainstream media. Problem is, sympathy only goes so far. The Inquirer, They asked her about the potential expansion of the WNBA. Now, for those of you that don't know, the diva of Dump Divas, Kathy Engelbert, she has been massaging the feelings of her employees by pretending the WNBA is actually in a financial position to open one or two more dumps. According to Natasha Cloud, expanding the league, that will only partially meet the demands of these unionized employees. We are tired of accepting crumbs. We want our full piece of the pound my brown cake. I have been telling you guys that these women are entitled. I have been telling you they are constantly demanding things when they have absolutely no leverage to be making demands. According to Natasha Cloud, the reason the WNBA is a huge embarrassing failure is because there's been a lack of investment in the league. Lack of investment? Lack of investment. If I remember correctly, 
Kathy Engelbert played the role of sympathy to perfection. She was able to convince woke corporations to hand over $75 million to these bearded beauties. $75 million! That charitable donation made last year. So I'm a bit confused when Natasha Cloud is complaining about a lack of investment. She claimed, if you invest in us, I guarantee you, you will see a return. <laughs> oh, really? Really? Over the last three decades, there have been plenty of dumbasses who invested in the WNBA. Guess how many dollars they received in return? Better yet, guess how many pesos they received in return? Zero. You would be better off investing in an air conditioning company at the North Pole than investing your money in the dump. But there is a reason for this lack of return. There's a reason dump divers have been unable to generate profit. Of course, it's not their fault. No, 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 no! There is no such thing as accountability in the WNBA. These women are victims. Victims cannot be held accountable. The reason the WNBA has been unable to capitalize on these investments is because the investors are not fully committed. It's the investor's fault. The people donating money to the WNBA, they are to blame. <laughs> now, to be fair, Natasha Cloud, she's probably right. I would imagine these companies sponsoring the league, they're not fully committed to their success. But I wonder why, I wonder why they would not be willing to invest $150 million instead of $75 million. When you're looking to invest, one of the things that you look at is the historical performance of the company. How has the WNBA performed in the last 30 years? They haven't. Over the last three decades, this league has raised hundreds of millions of dollars, sympathy dollars. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if you give me hundreds of millions of dollars, I'm looking to turn that into billions of dollars. Donald Trump, orange man, bad. When Donald Trump graduated from college, his father gave him, I think it was one, maybe two million dollars to start his company. He invested in his son's future. Donald Trump turned that one or two million into one or two billion. That was a smart investment. I have yet to meet the financial advisor who would recommend investing in a group of trash engineers who are consistently outperformed by waste management. But it's not just financial investment that Natasha Cloud is complaining about. She also complained about the lack of media coverage the WNBA receives. Um, what? Lack of media coverage? What was one of the biggest stories in the mainstream media last year? Bob Griner. The WNBA receives nothing but favorable media coverage. I bet the NFL would be willing to pay for the favorable media coverage the WNBA receives. Natasha Cloud whined about the fact that TNT does not broadcast WNBA games. They showcase the NBA two nights every week. How come TNT is refusing to show me operating the forklift? Well, Tosh, this one is simple to explain. TNT doesn't have the broadcast rights to air pretend basketball games. You see, unlike ESPN, TNT is not in the business of losing money. They are not willing to pay for games that no one is watching. Speaking of ESPN, the worldwide leader in Woke, not immune to the wrath of Natasha Cloud. She insinuated that ABC and ESPN are not taking full advantage of their deal with the WNBA. They're not broadcasting enough games. Now, to be fair, it's a valid complaint. We are 18 days into the month of June, the month set aside to celebrate Woke Christmas, the month set aside to proudly flaunt your pride. There is not another league in this country filled with more pride than the WNBA. The dump offers representation of all letters of the alphabet, plenty of L's and abundance of G's, handfuls of women's with beards like ZZ. Now you would think, you would think, with ESPN dedicated to the Woke Wiener, with ESPN constantly bragging about being the exclusive home to the WNBA. You would think during the month of woke Christmas, ESPN ABC would fill their schedule with live action from the dump. You would think wrong. Unfortunately, that has not been the case. Three weeks into June, ESPN has broadcast a total of two WNBA games. Two! Dose! ESPN's broadcast more college softball in 24 hours than they broadcast WNBA games in 18 days. 
One of the last games broadcast by ESPN featured the New York Pretenders against the Seattle Shitfucks, two teams that are supposedly filled with stars. Several months ago, ESPN was promoting the Big Three in NYC, a trio of players who 99% of the population could not identify in a two-person lineup. They could show one person in a basketball jersey alongside some average dude with a beard. Most people would think the bearded dude played in the WNBA. But the star-studded affair on ESPN, 207,000 viewers. I wonder why ESPN will go weeks during the summer without showcasing the WNBA. Natasha Cloud mentioned the increased investment in the NWSL. KC, what the hell is the NWSL? The NWSL is the organization responsible for donating woke welfare to prepubescent boys like Megan Rapino. They recently announced the expansion of their league by adding another team in California. Dump divers like Natasha Cloud, very jealous of this investment. But there's a valid explanation as to why companies are investing in the NWSL and not investing in the WNBA. Mythical racism. Their demographic is different than ours. Our league is filled with beautiful black women of all shapes and sizes. We need to market this as a positive instead of a negative. Translation. The NWSL is receiving money because the league consists of mostly white players, and the WNBA is being neglected because they are predominantly black. <laughs> they just, they just don't get it. They don't get it. Race has absolutely nothing to do with this. The NWSL drew close to a million viewers for their championship game last fall. You would have to combine all games in the WNBA Finals to reach the same number. The NWSL has a few teams that consistently draw good crowds. Outside of Seattle, every other team in the WNBA struggles to fill high school gyms to 50% capacity. This is not hard to figure out. And the thing is... WNBA players have complained so much over the last couple of years, the complaints are no longer working. I said this two years ago. At some point, the sympathy will run dry and it's on you to perform. It's on you to draw an audience. It's on you to create an interesting, entertaining product. One thing we have learned about the WNBA in the last 27 years, they don't have the ability to do that. But give me your thoughts. Another day, another complaint by a WNBA dump diver. Is lack of exposure, is lack of media coverage the reason the WNBA is a huge embarrassing failure? Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.